and we mature. But how do you mature when you, it's like a donut. People talk, you can talk about a donut. And you can look at a donut. And you can tell everybody else how wonderful that donut is and everything. But it means nothing until you've eaten the donut. Hmm? You've got to experience. Go through, they design cars. Uh, beautiful cars that, that, that uh, and they get SABS approved or whatever. I'm not, not even just cars. I'm a, let's talk about things I know, plumbing, you know. If it isn't SABS approved, I don't buy it. Because it may flood the house. And I won't look like a good plumber. So in order for it to be SABS approved, the way I understand it, it needed to go through some test. It needed to be pressurized, more than the pressure that it would that will come from the street and then say it's six or seven bar it needs to be tested to 12, 12, 12 bar which is 1200 kPa now the street press is only so it's got to go through a test to say this fitting is now worthy of being putting into somebody's house and I can sleep and know that they won't get wet in their sleep you know? <laughs> so you understand the concept well let's just look at some scriptures that, 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 that help us to to, to, to understand uh, um, the, the, the concept. Here, here is one Peter. Praise to God for a living hope. It's entitled one Peter. And it's um, before, it's after James and before John. Now it was written by Peter the disciple. Who should know what it means to be tested. He went through some trials. Remember that he's, he's the one that said, Jesus, Jesus, I'm, I'm going to die for you. You know, they, they can't take you. I will, I will stop them and, and, and I, I will be there for you. Hmm? And, and um, but when the cookie kicked the crunch, or what, what do you call it, when the fan, when the cookie crumbled, I think we stick to that one. And... And then, you know, when the tire hit the road, when it came down to it, and they, they arrested Jesus and all the trauma and, uh, and everything, then, then, then he saw what, what they were doing. He suddenly realized he wasn't up to his promise. And, um, and the cock crowed three times, and, and Jesus said, that's going to happen to you. And uh, then he, he realized his inadequacy, and he just broke down in tears, and, and, um, and he wept. Um, and he realized that he was, in his own eyes, he was a failure. However, so that was a trial. He went through a trial, you see. He went through a Jesus mountaintop experience. But somewhere along the line, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, it's a mountaintop experience. We don't really know too much about what's going to happen about this journey. But we feel wonderful because God allows us to feel it and... Like a dove, he descends and, 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 and welcomes us into the family and so on. It's beautiful. But you've got to get off the mountain and go down into the valley. And that's where, where life happens. And that's where we grow. That's where the seed that was given to you on the mountain gets planted in the valley where there's water. Hmm? You've got to go down to the valleys. And Peter went through a valley experience. And broke down, and Jesus, if you remember, when he met him later on, on the, after he had resurrected, and they, he had uh, breakfast, I think, with him on the beach. And, uh, and then he took Peter aside, and, and, he, uh, says, and he affirmed Peter. Peter denied him three times, and then he, he once again affirmed him. Because he knew that Peter's spirit was broken, and said, Do you love me? You, you know I love you, Lord. Do you love me? You know. And he re what he did, he reaffirmed. Jesus corrected that, picked him up, switched, switched it around. And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, as Jesus was, after he got baptized and Peter received the, the, the downpouring of the Holy Spirit. And then, and then he uh, was filled with courage. He was never again going to deny Jesus. He always, until his death, he spoke about him. And so it was a different Peter. And, and, and he wrote these words. And it's uh, entitled, Praise to God for a Living Hope, 1, 1 Peter 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has... How's this? Is this sound irritating you? 
Yeah, but further from the mouth. But I hold it, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I, I beg your pardon. <laughs> and now it's better? Yeah. Okay. All right. You just throw something at me if it doesn't come. <laughs> you can hear in the back. Okay. So, in His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope. A living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And in, into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. Here it is, guys. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen Him, you love Him. And even though you do not see Him now, you believe in Him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Here it is, the testing. And another word that we can use, or phrase that we can use is refining. Refined by the fire. He talks about gold, and I was thinking, they were pretty advanced 2,000 years ago, you know, to be able to talk about gold. And who of you know anything about gold? What I've heard is that it's heat. It gets refined by fire. The pure gold comes to the top of the stand. Hmm? But it, it only comes after it's gone through fire, through an extreme heat. And so the pure things of God, that God is awakening in us, the seed of Himself that He's deposited in us, needs to be to go through the things in the valley needs to be refined by trials. <laughs> and God allows us, actually, to go through certain things. He uses what I have seen for myself. He uses the circumstances. And I've heard that coming through you. He the, uses the circumstances, the very circumstances, to refine us. And then suddenly we begin to discover who He is. Because he's, he's allowing this to grow inside of us. So that the fruits of His Spirit, for, for, for example, now you start to love others, as you say. You start to, 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 uh, you start to have the fruits of the Spirit. Fruits that weren't in you before. You, before you had fruits that were of your past life. They were fruits of selfishness or of bitterness. Not peace. Few fruits of confusion. Now what are the fruits of the Spirit? That's peace. And you start to have a peace that surpasses, as the Bible says, all understanding. But how, is it, how does it grow? In the valley through circumstances. You start to have a joy. He talks about joy. In fact, I'm not going to read the scripture now because of time. But in James, again, it says, Consider it pure joy. That you go through trials and persecutions. That you'll be lacking in nothing. Once you've gone through. Now you tell people that are going through some hard times. You know what this is a joyful experience. They'll say yes you know what. It's, it's all very good but it's not really how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but here is the, the thing. If you encourage people and, and, and if we allow ourselves to be encouraged and, and, and begin to actually recognize. You know, faith in advance, I saw this at the back of some book, I think it was called Disappointment with God, and says faith in advance only makes sense when you look back. When you go on in your life and you... And you've, and you've walked through the storms with holding on to God's hand. And when you look back, as you, as, as you have testified this morning, for sure, then you, can, then you can see God's hand. 
and how he worked with him. You know? Sean, I'm glad that you've said that what you've said this morning because I want to say this. Jesus was led into the desert. Another word that we know, that we use symbolically, is the wilderness. We call it the wilderness of our lives. When I was in prison, it was this last weekend, we, we, sent a, we were with a whole group of people again. Um, we go here for the weekend. I don't know if you heard of the Kairos people, yeah, but I know that God's blessing so many they people. They usually do his Ephesians 6, only Ephesians 6. Yes. The arm of God. You're right. Yes. That, that prayer that you, Sean's talking about, we read that scripture before we go into the prison and we pray and it talks about putting on the armor of God and, and that there are enemies because we know that we're going into a dark place where people are, are under, you would know, that are under, that are possessed by their past and, and, and are held captive, in fact. But now, one of the things that I was saying, I had an opportunity to, to, to just uh, encourage them and I said, you know guys, <coughs> here's the thing. Uh, God led the Israelites out of Egypt into the desert. I know I've often repeated this here. And what is in the desert? And I asked the prisoners, well, what is in the desert? And they, they, they were more clever than you. They actually answered me. And they, <laughs> and, and they said, nothing. <laughs> There's nothing in the desert. I said, well, what do you have here in prison? And the response was pretty similar, not, not much. <laughs> hmm? There's no McDonald's, there's no DSTV, all these creature comforts. And there's a, there's a reason sometimes that God brings us into the wilderness, maybe everything around us that, that, that we normally found security in, suddenly collapses in our lives. We might lose our job. Somebody in our, close to us might, might, have, might die, or somebody, one of the breadwinners, or who knows. And suddenly we found ourselves on what we trusted. The, the ground is now shaky. And our life as we know it, or knew it, up until the point, is now not anymore. Now there's a nothingness. There's a wilderness experience. And most people can testify that in their lives, that's when, when they turn, when they turn to Jesus Christ, they found Him. And there's a reason sometimes why God allows us to go through a nothing experience where there's nothing around you, because He doesn't want us to be distracted. 